in resistance to Israel. You can't keep supporting the kingdom of darkness and get by with it. You cannot be neutral when it comes to the things of God and the people of God. Because to be neutral is to be against God. We're either for Him or we're against Him. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of people being mealy mouth. I'm tired of people wishy-washy. We are yes needs to be yes, and our no needs to be no. And it needs to be clear whose team we are on. After Gideon caught up with Zeb and Salmuna, he killed them. And he, made, and he met the man that would not help him in that city of Succoth. And he, he, he forced out of him the 77 names of the elders of that town. And the Bible says that he taught them with the thorns and briars of the wilderness. Don't you know he did? Then he went to the Peniel and tore down their tower and killed every man in the town. He kept his word. You hear me, Ozark Bethel. God is a keeper of his word. The enemies of God will suffer brutally now and forever. They will be taught with the vengeance of God. The enemies of Israel and the enemies of God's church will ultimately answer to him. Yeah. Matthew's commentary said, God will make the wrath of man praise him. My, my. What a day. Then we get down to verse number 13. It says, make them like a wheel. He's speaking here of, of a huge iron wheels that they had. They would roll over to mash the corn down. And Asaph is saying, roll over them like that wheel that rolls over the corn stalks. Verse 14 and verse 15. As the fire burneth the wood and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Verse 16. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. It's always our prayer that the enemies of God will realize it and desire to become a friend of God. That they'll be ashamed of the way that they're living and turn to God. It's my prayer today that someone who's not living for Jesus will realize the calamity ahead and realize that you're missing it and turn to the Lord because Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, amen. I said earlier, Iran isn't mentioned here in these countries. Now, they're financing it, but they're using these other countries to take this first brunt. And their efforts are going to fail and fail miserably. And Israel is going to win and win big. You watch and see. Because the Bible, the Bible said it. It shall be. I said, the Bible said it, it shall be. The Bible said it, it shall be. Aren't you thankful we don't have to question? We know when he said it, it shall be. Amen. Hallelujah. His promises are yes and amen in your life. If he said it, it shall be. We're going to fail. But see here in Psalm 83, pretty soon going to turn to Ezekiel 38. Psalm 83 to Ezekiel 38. But before Ezekiel 38, you and I are taken out of here at the rapture. See, in Ezekiel 38, when that happens, you and I will have been raptured and will have been at the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb for seven years. This is how close we are to the coming of Jesus. But in Ezekiel 38, see, we'll come down for the battle of Armageddon with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Whether you know it or not, everybody in this room, Brother Jones is going to be a cowboy or a cowgirl. He's a horse guy. That's why I said that. Because we're all going to ride down with Jesus on horses of white. Glory to God. And we're following Jesus. Can you picture this now? The world will have gathered Iran, Russia, all of the antagonists of God, the enemies of God, countless number of people, all their artillery, all of their military, all of their technology, all of their manpower. But when we ride down with Jesus to this earth, he's going to have faithful and true on his forehead. Hallelujah. His vesture is going to be dipped in blood. He, we're going to be following him and with one word from his mouth, they will instantly be destroyed. Now listen, the rapture is when Jesus comes for his church. But the second coming, Jesus comes with his church. Amen. Amen. 
for his church and with his church. Where does he, we are in Psalm 83 and also in between Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38, not only the rapture, but the Isaiah 17 war will happen where Damascus is wiped off the face of the earth. You can see right now how that can so easily happen anytime. You can see how the world is shaping up for the Antichrist to step in. You can see how the world is looking for someone with the answer. We see the mindset of the, of, the, of the Antichrist. We see the spirit of the Antichrist. John's gospel said the anti, that Antichrist spirit was already in the world then. We see how everything is shaping up for the abomination of desolation when the Antichrist will establish himself as God. Someone with the answer stepping to the forefront. It's all shaping up. The unrepentant militancy of a culture that Revelation chapter 9 says will not repent of their murder, speaking of abortion. Their sorcery, speaking that word pharmakeia, talking about the drugs and the system of drugs to keep people like cash cows, keep them addicted. They won't want to repent of their fornication, speaking about this ungodly immorality that's pervasive of every, in every kind, abominable lifestyles against the Word of God, people living in obstinance to the Word of God, this mindset of, of man is lifted up in his pride. We see how all that is forming. Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? Are you prepared for the rapture? We're celebrating the birth of the Savior. We celebrate Him all the time, but especially this month we give honor and special attention to the incarnation, the birth of Jesus Christ. Born in a barn, born in a manger in humility. And as a baby, nobody can reject a baby. Born in a way that everyone could receive him. But coming again in power and might and glory. But pay attention to the season that we're in. I'm not predicting the day or the hour. No man can do that. But can you see how things are shaping up? Are you aware that on November the 8th of this year, just last month, just over a month ago, a plan was put into motion backed by the Bill Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the United Nations, the European Union? For 50 nations in the next, by, two, by 2028, to be fully cashless in operation. And they're wanting the world to be completely cashless by 2030. Yeah. They're already putting in systems of social credit that they're preparing to tell people how much food you can buy, what you can consume, whether or not you qualify to travel here or there to another state, to another place. All of these things, this is not, this, this is a plan already set in motion. There are whole food stores that already some of them have hand scanners already in place. And just like the Bible says, they're finding the best place for these information, this DPI, they're calling it, with all of your vaccine information, all of your banking information, all of your accounts in a central bank in the right hand of the forehead is the best place. You can see how it is, I'm not saying this is the mark of the beast system, but it is a foreshadowing at minimum. And we're less than seven years away from that. You can see how the world is being prepared for the Antichrist. The World Economic Forum founder, Klaus Schwab, his right-hand advisor is a homosexual Jew. 
named Yevel Noah Harari. Scary stuff. As this group of elites that meet regularly around the world conspiring how they're going to control man. Now, I'm not saying this homosexual Jew is the Antichrist, but someone like him fits the profile that Daniel described as a man that would not have the love of a woman. This man is very influential. He's brilliant in his mind, but full of, this is what he said, and I quote, History began when humans invented gods and will end when humans become gods. He said, and I quote, humans are hackable animals. They no longer have a soul, a spirit, or free will. That day is over. And what he is saying is they're coming up with technology to be, he even said on a video that I saw that gives you chills to see the wickedness on this level gives you chills. The lack of regard for humanity on this level just gives you chills. That we'll be able to put thoughts in your brain. He said, we're going to be able to pull, put people into a room, show them a picture of a world leader, and we will be able to tell whether or not they're for them or against them. You can see how the Antichrist would really love that kind of technology. Because anyone who does not follow suit with his pattern will be killed. This is not spiritual gobbledygook. This is stuff that's happening right now. This is how close we are to the coming of Jesus. The rapture. That's why, sir and ma'am, our house needs to be in ready. It needs to be ready. Our house needs to be filled with the presence of God. There needs to be a refocus upon the word of God being spoken over your house and your children and your wife and your finances and your life. There needs to be a resurgence of urgency about getting people in the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming. His foot is even at the door. Amen. Just one quick thing, that terrorist group Hamas, Hamas is a Hebrew word. It, 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 they have said that it means the Islamic resistance movement. But let me take you back to Genesis chapter 6 verse 11 when it was describing the world in Noah's day. It said the earth was corrupt before God and filled with violence. That word violence in Hebrew is the word Hamas. Hamas means lawlessness, spilling blood, sexual perversion, thievery, idolatry, physical violence, injurious language, noisy, wild, ruthless, a false witness. Does that not describe them? Joel chapter 3 verse 19, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom, which is the nations gathered around Israel, shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence or the Hamas against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land and the land will be filled with hostages. That's straight from the book of all books. We're living in the moments of the end of the dispensation of grace. But hallelujah, today we're still in the dispensation of grace. Where the mercy of God was new when the sun came up over that lake this morning. And the grace of God is sufficient for you. It's available for us. Anyone, anywhere that will call upon the name of Jesus as of December 17th at about 1215 can get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Bridget, would you come? I have sensed this Christmas season, I believe like no other, in an urgency to preach the Christ that came and the Christ that's coming again. I'll be very shocked if we have another Christmas on this earth. I'm serious. I'll be surprised. That's how close I believe we are to the coming of Jesus. Even so come. Are you looking for him? All this is exciting for the Christian. Oh Lord, we need you like we've never needed you. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true. 
Well, I thank you, Lord, that the final stone, Jesus, is going to break through to the Jewish people and they're going to know who you are before it's over. They're going to call you their Messiah. I thank you, Lord, for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy today. It's overshadowing us. I thank you for your grace that is more than sufficient. I thank you, Lord, that the Holy Ghost is going to get involved in some people's situation today. He's going to move in their life and their circumstances. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel his presence. Am I speaking to anyone right now? Anyone? This says, preacher, I'm not ready for the coming of Jesus. There's sin in my life. There's disobedience in my life. I've been trying to put together my own salvation. We've, we've, we've all been, we, we, we try to put together our own plan and it's failing, it's falling apart because there's no, there's no other way except Jesus. There's no other way but the, the Christ who was born into this world that came to die for our sin. He's the only way. Anybody lifting their hands saying, Creston, that's me. I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my life. I'm not living in that right relationship, and I need Jesus. Just lift your hands. Don't be ashamed. Just say, I need him today. I need him today. Amen. I see you. Praise God. Someone else today. I say, I need Jesus in my life. How many people today say, Creston, I'm like Mary. I don't know how. How is this going to happen? I've got this situation. I've got this circumstance. I've got this going on. But I need the Holy Ghost to get involved. <laughs> I need Him to step in and make it happen. I need Him to do what only He can do. How many of you lifting your hands saying, that's me. That's probably a lot of us today. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Oh, oh i, I got to have you work in this situation. Come on, all over this room. If someone looked at your hand that you need Jesus, just step out here and come. Many others that said, I need the Holy Ghost to work in my situation. Come on, step out of your seats and come and stand here in this altar. Come on, come on now. There's many hands. Come on, step out and come. It may not be your normal thing, but come on. Come on to this altar. We're going to bring it to the Lord. The Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. The Holy Ghost is going to get involved. It's not going to be human, a human that does it. It's not going to be a man that does it. The Holy Ghost is the one that can do it. Amen. Praise God. How many people am I looking at and say, man, I want to be ready for the rapture. I see the signs all around me. I realize the closeness. I don't want to let anything, anyone, any disobedience, any distraction to get in the way. I'm looking for Jesus. Come on, lift your hand again if you're saying that's me. Oh, yeah. I want you to lift up with both those hands there in your seats and I want you to say, Lord, I want to be ready. Come on, humble yourself before him today. So, God, I want to be ready for your coming. I want to live right before you. I want strength to stand. Don't let me be open to any deception of any kind. Let me keep my eye on Jesus. We're going to pray and minister to these in the altar today and the Holy Ghost is going to go to work.
center of this church from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus Lord nothing else matters nothing in this world will do Turn. 
the cross before me, the world behind me. For pastor comes. The, the cross before me, the world behind me. child of God, as a child of God, we get to win. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise God for a good word this morning. The reality is Jesus is coming soon. He's going to call our name and we're going to rise to be with him. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your word, for the encouraging word, the reality in your word, God, the, 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 the promise that was there ages ago, but now we're seeing it come to pass. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the ministry today of, of this couple, Lord. Father, we pray your blessing upon them today. As they go forth from this place tomorrow, Lord, they go out to another field, another place. We pray you'd pour out your spirit upon Brother Creston, Sister Bridget, Lord, use them. Father, we thank you for their ministry and for their love. We, we bless you. We give you honor and praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before you go, let me say one more thing about tonight. We had passed around sign-ups. It doesn't matter. If you're here today, we want you to be there tonight. Come and be a part of our Christmas banquet. I promise it's going to be a blessing to you. God bless.